Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please show us some love and subscribe for more content. For this review, we're aiming for the moon and discussing the first three episodes of Hello Tomorrow, now out on Apple TV. Uh, Akram, give me your sales pitch for this review. Uh, were you were you buying these first three episodes? <laughs> I definitely was buying these first three episodes. They <laughs> sold me on the idea, and I actually enjoyed it. Um, contrary to the Rotten Tomato score, which I think is unfair, it has a thirty seven percent right now. But I think these episodes were very good. Um, I think it was a strong cast of characters and also supporting characters as well. I think the actors did a phenomenal job, and the world building of retro future in like the 60s or so really unique stuff but let's get your take yeah i have to disagree with the critics um i thought it was a great show um just from these first three episodes we really get a lot of dialogue some heart-to-heart exposition and yeah the world building is is amazing um it's like watching like a live action version of like the jetsons or something um I just love the little details that they throw in this. And it, it actually doesn't distract me from the story, which is really awesome. It feels like it really just enhances this kind of this world building. But yeah, uh, so this first episode starts off. Uh, we are introduced to this character, um, uh, Jack Billings, uh, played by Billy Crudup. Uh, and he's in this diner. And we really that first seven minutes of the that scene kind of definitely like showed us like his his character. I think no pun intended. He, he really sells his performance uh, in that diner scene. But yeah. Tell me what you thought of uh, Jack's character. Yeah, and it also was a great way. It was like that sell me this pen scene from Wolf of Wall Street. It was like you get to see his talent and his skill. Um, and especially he's selling to somebody who almost seems impossible to sell to. That person's really down. And so I think he did a phenomenal job there. And what I love about this character is that he seems like he knows it all. Um but it seems like he'll forego everything in his past just to achieve what he wants in his career. And I think that definitely will play a big part later on. And I think he's learning. Um, should we get right into spoilers, I guess? Yeah, I mean, uh, episode one was kind of, you know, this introduction into his character in these world. What did you think of the other characters? Yeah, so we're introduced to the cast of salesmen. So we have Shirley, we have Herb, we have Eddie. Um, and then we also get to meet his mother, Barbara. And so apparently he has a son. He left his wife long time ago, 18 years or so. And he hasn't looked back since. And he doesn't even know how his son looks like at all. And so in the beginning of the show, we see it's such like a sweet, cute thing. It's like it's so friendly in this neighborhood. And we see all this futuristic stuff happen. And this guy going off in a jetpack. And we see this delivery truck that has like the, which is really cool it has like this stork cartoon in the window mm-hmm. screen and stuff and it's delivering packages and it by accident runs into or backs up into this lady and we later figure out this lady is jack's ex-wife um and they have a kid together right um so going from there i think that we're still getting introduced to these characters and their mindset and stuff like that in the world because their business really is to sell um this experience they're trying to sell people in a notion of living in on the moon and apparently it's cheap or so so it's kind of like a vacation or something like that really interesting after they did all the mining stuff because the government or something mined there for a while and now it's like this nice cruise kind of experience there um but yeah so why don't you tell us a little bit more about how we get introduced to joey shorter his son yeah so his son uh well first you know discovers that well the lady his ex-wife that was hit by the truck um obviously like uh he takes her to the hospital and then um uh he kind of finds out about this uh like timeshare uh like uh, committee or like this pitch you know that's being uh uh shown at this local like vendor like the, a lot of people are at i think it's called like vistaville or something yeah. they're they're uh learning about this timeshare thing that they're selling so he he sees uh his father's uh like speech and he's actually really captivated it and um i thought it was really like cool how how they like showed this kind of dynamic between them two because they don't really know anything about each other um like bill uh jack doesn't know what his son looks like his son doesn't know what his father looks like he he, all he knows is that he's abandoned him um but they just become so naturally close together 
right? And it really like sells their their characters were so well done in this these first three episodes. I really felt like they they were relatable as a father and yeah. son, um, just the way they were. And I love Joey's progression over these first three uh, episodes. Um, he goes from being this very innocent kid that works a retail job, and then he kind of it makes me wonder like has does he does how much of his father he has inside him because uh he starts you know learning how to like psychologically like you know manipulate people into like you know buying these things and uh he kind of wins his father over too to the point where like his father actually like brings him into his his business so i, I thought that was really cool how they how they went about his character um yeah, yeah what did you think of, of joey yeah and, and everybody who's watching why we're mentioning this right now is because you would think from the trailer that this show is completely something else but no all that future stuff happens in the background with these characters the whole thing is really about jack trying to get closer to his son that he never tells his son outright that i'm your father right so he's just trying to recruit this kid and that's his way of being closer to his son finally so he has this guilt over that and i think it's a great chance for him to grow as well into becoming a better man or a better father and not be so selfish um because he kind of treated his mother cold a little bit too in some scenes as well so he just really is you know he he just wants to take an adventure and, and care about his career um so i thought it was really sweet honestly i thought the scenes where they were in the car and and he was trying to pep talk uh, pep, pep talk Joey um, how to sail rights and stuff like that mm -hmm. it it was his way of actually practicing baseball let's say or or mm -hmm. doing these type of activities that one would yeah. do you know um, and you could tell that Joey needed a father like there's there's some there was like a scene where he mentioned like I didn't do this I didn't do that I didn't do that and now it's like time where maybe he can be exposed to that type of stuff it's it's a very sweet thing yeah and and we really get to see like what Jack's character is like because I don't know if they mentioned I think his own father may have abandoned him oh or, or no they yeah. said the father it's died like of weird. suicide or something yeah, yeah but um it was interesting to see like when he delivers his like sales pitch to people he tries to sell the idea of like happiness through like family because that's that's like the big thing that they're playing off of like the 50s was all about like you know family mm -hmm. and like the American dream so he's trying to sell that but it's ironic because like he's estranged from his own family. Right? Yeah. He doesn't know his his wife or his, his son. And yeah, he definitely feels this guilt for for leaving this this young kid because he sees him and he sees so much potential. And at first he tries to to sell him um like a complex and he even tries to upgrade him. Um but I think he just feels so bad that uh, you know he 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 tries to give him his money back with even more than he he earned it or or that he spent for it. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's like, it's like a, like a game of catch between them. Like they're trying to go door to door and like, and he, he doesn't really tell him or mention anything about like how he knows his, his mother or anything. Cause I think he's trying to keep that like a secret. Cause I think if he found out, um, I think it would ruin like their kind of like relationship. Um, so I think this is as close as he's going to get to like a father and son kind of dynamic, which is really sad. Yeah. And, and I think it's like you said, ironic and it's really interesting because you know, being close to your family in the 50s and 60s was super important. I think it still is, but even more so in the 50s and 60s. So it was a staple. And these these cast of characters, their world is basically traveling and, and selling this idea that you could go away from your family and go to the moon. So there's so much separation from the foundation and i think it's really interesting to see now this guy uh by episode three i'm jumping a little bit ahead but we could go back and forth um now he's realizing well maybe i should do right by my son and and stick stick around in this area a little bit more and and see where it goes from there and and it is sad but it's it's very sweet too that that's i think the main point of hello tomorrow it isn't the futurism it's it's trying to rekinder something between each other, friends and family. Um, but now that we spoke about that, I want to get your thoughts on the side characters. These side characters are hilarious. I love Herb. He's a weird <laughs> guy. <laughs> They're great. They they very feel so much like drawn out of like a like a fifties comic book or something. We have like the different you know characters. Like we have um uh what's it, Eddie 
Yeah. Uh, he's kind of like this like gambling man right. who is kind of like in debt and he's trying to avoid like this enforcer <laughs> in like the three episodes. But mm-hmm. he keeps like he doesn't learn his lessons and he keeps trying to gamble all the way their money. And he has a relationship with with uh, Shirley, who's kind of like, you know, she's kind of like uh, Jack's like right hand woman, if you want to say. Mm-hmm. But she actually like knows what she's doing. And she, it really like she's a very strong character. And um, at the end of the day, she she treats this like a business. Right. Because Jack, I think, kind of drinks his own Kool-Aid at some points. Like, I, I feel like he doesn't uh, like even though he's trying to sell these timeshares and make money. I think he believes like he's it's kind of like a God complex. Like he's actually like saving these people or fixing your lives like that one guy from the bar. Right. Um, that like told him like, oh, yeah, like uh, you fit, you save my family through this timeshare. Right. So I think he kind of like, you know, falls for his own pitch in a way. So I think Shirley kind of like reminds him that, yeah, this at the end of the day, this is just a business. Right. You have to separate yourself from that. And I think that's what she's trying to do with, you know, him and Joey too to remind him, you know he's he's still like a young kid right he's you know he's still kind of like naive to this whole industry uh, which we see over the of course the episodes because joey is still kind of like learning and he doesn't really know yet like how to be a salesman but i think he starts learning and picking up things and i really love that scene where like he pitches um to his own retail boss and he starts learning like i have my own market and I my own kind of like customers and i just gotta like play on that so i think that was really smart and yeah, Herb, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like funny. He's, but in a way, I think he has his own kind of problems. I, that's why I like this show too, because it, it talks so much about like, you know, if you just, you could buy your dreams, right? And it'll fix all your problems. But as we see over the course of the show, we see different families that they're trying to sell these like uh, condominiums to. And then we see they're really like messed up relationships. So it's, it's like not like you're going to fix these problems away just by buying a timeshare, right? Well, no, no, it's also the, the fact that um, you're so disenfranchised and you're basically s- telling people to reach for the stars and, and follow your dreams. Yeah, you're stuck doing that. So I think that takes a toll on people. And I think that's something refreshing for these characters to to see somebody new that they were poking fun at him and saying that oh he's gonna be desperate he's probably gonna end up like us but he's a young kid and he wants to figure out what exactly are his dreams or is his dreams and i i think the whole thing just works really well um yeah and then we're also introduced to myrtle mayburn and i i thought in the trailers i thought she was gonna be like this character that was kind of like Shirley, but I don't know. She's going to be, uh, she's not a cog in the wheel. That's for sure. She's, she's going to be a stick in the wheel or something. Cause she looks right. trouble a little <laughs> bit later on. And it's so funny, the dynamic between Herb and Myrtle. So Myr- Myrtle mm-hmm. is like this lady who her husband cheated on her and she left everything. And now <laughs> Herb <laughs> sold her like this thing to go to the moon, but it's like three months or six months and she has nowhere else to go. Um, and she meets Lester. I wonder if he's going to be a regular in the show. Lester's like this guy who, I don't know who this, what's his job actually Kinda is. like those like, like, uh, law enforcers. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. And yeah. He serves people papers and stuff that they got to mm-hmm. sign out, but it looks like they're going to be in cahoots to try to take down these, these group of people. And it's mm-hmm. also interesting because Jack keeps talking about the boss, the boss, but I, I, it seems something's fishy. It seems like he's making something up whenever he mentions that to Shirley. I want to ask you because uh, they keep pitching the idea of like the, the moon and they keep like having these advertisements and they revealed that they had a, they had like an actor come in. Oh yeah. It was like this wild West guy and mm-hmm. he's kind of like the, the sales pitch mascot, I guess. I want to ask you, do you think the, the whole kind of like moon thing is legit or do you think it's kind of like a scam? I don't, it's, I, you know what it is? I would have thought it was a scam. But then they showed the rocket go up to space. That has to be a really expensive like propaganda or something and to to fake it to people. I, I really don't know. And I don't know if Jack really knows the inner workings of... I don't even know if he knows how it really is up there, like footage. I have no clue. It does, for sure, it looks like it's kind of like the snake oil pitch to some people Mm -hmm. i I would imagine um you had an interesting theory before we spoke uh on here you said that the moon maybe is fake or something i really believe it's fake i think the technology of this world is real i think the inventor that made they said was like the he's kind of like the walt disney i guess of the moon 
Um, I think his inventions are real, and I think that just adds to kind of like the the paradise quality of the moon. But I think it's all fake. I think it's it's something that they dress up to make people think that it's the moon. So I really think at the end of this uh, series, we're going to see that maybe the moon is kind of like this fake kind of uh, like, you know, paradise that people are going to. But they it feels like they're on the moon, but they're actually not. I think the rocket is also kind of like a like a, a charade. Mm. Like maybe it's just it's something that they, you know, launch every three months that they said to make it seem like it's actually like people are going there. So who knows? Maybe it, I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe it's, it's actually like they they colonize the moon or something that would be cool actually um but also what did you think of kind of like the the technology of this world i was gonna ask you like what were your some of like your favorite inventions that you saw in this because this show has like a lot of like kooky like weird analog retro style inventions it you know what's funny is that a lot is relatable today i mean we see roombas um so, you know, text to speech this and that i think the thing that stood out to me the most was the baseball that was weird. Mm. And the popcorn thing. Um, I uh, mean, obviously the robots popcorn. too. Yeah. yeah. What, what are your favorites? Yeah, all those were pretty cool. Yeah, I think the robots definitely stood out. I think I think retro futurism, when people think of it, they obviously, the first thing they think of is like automated servants or maids or whatever. So I think I love how the robots look in the show too. Like it, it's kind of like almost like Star Wars-y too. Yeah. Like how like they have like different functions. Like they had like the, the robot in the beginning that has like the beer uh gut it's right. kind of funny and it says like hey eyes up here honey <laughs> whatever <laughs> it's really cool it's really like uh comical and even like the the floating cars i think are really well done it seems like yeah. something out of like a like a flash gordon poster or something it's really cool yeah it's and and it has that 1950 60 touch to it too which i think just mm. adds so much to it to the authentic, authenticity of it um which is really interesting um but yeah, all that being said, uh, do you have any other thoughts? Yeah, I mean, overall, I I, I don't know what the critics were, were saying yeah, when man. they saw this because I saw a completely different show. I think it was beautifully done. I, I think it's it really took me by surprise because I thought it was going to be a show about like the future. It was going to be like this dystopian. It's so funny because we just reviewed Vesper and we're mm. reviewing all these shows and movies about like the future, right? But it, it, it's like a different take on the future. It feels like a very like close to home or like an alternate reality yeah. kind of future. Um, and I, I just love the production quality. We see this kind of like atomic age community with like streamlined inventions and robots. And it's just, it's just so awesome. And it's just great to see naturally on screen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would, I, I would actually give all three of these episodes a 10 out of 10. How would you give it? Me too, dude. I would give it a 10 out of 10. I don't know what the hell these rotten people, rotten tomato peoples are talking about. <laughs> it's like, is it boring? I don't think so. I, I think we were just talking about it. I think it's actually really deep. I, I like it. And I think it's unique too. I actually think it's pretty charming in some aspects. Yeah. Like it's different. It's, it's, it feels adult, but there's like a weird innocence to it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Something friendly about it is just like, you know, for sure, probably there's going to be like a scandal down the line or something like that. Uh, some revelations a little bit later on that's mm. going to be really dramatic. Uh, but who knows, everybody? We're we're definitely going to review this every week. So this is going to be an episode by episode uh, weekly review. Um, so what would you rate? Oh, I'm sorry. We already talked about that. I'm, <laughs> I'm bugging out right now. Well, yeah, I, 10 out. All yeah. three episodes, I'd give it 10 out of 10, honestly. How would you rate it? Yeah, yeah. I would give it 10 out of 10 as well. Uh, but yeah, everybody, that is our review for Hello Tomorrow. Again, now streaming on Apple TV. If you like this video, again, please check out our other playlists and drop a like. It'll greatly help us out. And leave a comment of your favorite episodes down below. We have plenty of reviews coming out. Also, Cocaine Bear, which we're going to do. I guess it's going to be crazy. Um, we have a Let's Talk About with somebody special that we had in the past two people actually um plenty more content to come so dylan why don't you take us away yeah we also have a uh, quantum mania i just released today yep. we'll be reviewing that as well yeah plenty of content guys but yeah check out our other playlists as well if you haven't already we do a lot of similar shows and movies um we discuss on our channel but yeah thank you guys so much if you're not tuning in already please subscribe to the channel we're on youtube anchor anchor apple Podcasts, and spotify as well uh, and you can check our social links uh, for Instagram and Facebook as well. But yeah, until then, thanks for having lunch with us. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>